Test, test. <laughs> Thank you. 
housekeeping duties as Purdue makes their way down uh, for the press conference. Just a reminder, please, uh, there's no uh, live recording of this press conference. If you need to receive uh, copies of it or record it, please see our friends at Hammond Communications in the back and they will uh, help you out with that. Um, the format on game day is that the head coach comes in with uh, the players, with the selected players. We open with a opening statement from the head coach and then we open the floor uh, to players for the student, uh, questions for the student athletes. So please uh, have your questions for them ready first. Once there are no more questions for the student athletes, we'll release them back to the locker room and continue with, head, uh, with questions for the head coach. The locker room will remain open for 30 minutes. Uh, by my calculations, uh, the Purdue locker room will be open until 3 p.m. Uh, and there's people down there to help you with that timing. Uh, please silence all of your cell phones and other mobile devices. Flash pho photography is not uh, permitted in the media room. We'll give you the uh, satellite coordinates for today's press conferences. Uh, it remains the same as the first three days. Galaxy 17, transponder 19B, downlink frequency 12075-50, horizontal. Uh, if you have a question, please uh, get the attention of me or the mic holders on the sides. Uh, we'll make sure you get the microphone. Please identify yourself uh, and your outlet before uh, posing a question, and please uh, address your questions to a specific member on the dais. All right, folks, we're about to get underway. Purdue, uh, again, advances to Boston to play Texas Tech in the next round in the Sweet 16. We'll ask 
Coach Painter, once he gets settled, to make an opening statement, and then we will uh, open the floor to questions for the players. Well, obviously, it was a um, you know a, a tough, grinded out you know type game. I thought um, Butler really posed some problems for us, especially in some ISOs, and I thought our guys did a, a really good job. I thought our rebounding in the first half was really <coughs> good. Um, just trying to make it as difficult as we can on Baldwin and uh, Martin. Um, I really thought if both of those guys played well, when they played good competition, they've won. And uh, you know we had to make it tough for them and try to get you know more shots than points for at least one of them. And we were able to do that with Baldwin and and uh, and, and bottle him up and just keep making it difficult on them. But I thought we we really did some good things on the offensive end until the last three minutes. Um, we lost our poise there, but we still were able to make an, enough plays. Um, we made a couple transition stops where we deflected behind. Vince made a big time block in transition. Um, we got a couple key rebounds there. But obviously the play of the game was um, our execution in Dakota knocking down that three um, to, to, to send it to five points. So, um, you know, I want to give credit to Butler. Obviously, um, they have a great program. They've done an unbelievable job. And Keelan Martin's a you know, fabulous player. I mean, fabulous player for a guy to score 2,000 points. Um, Kamar Baldwin is very, very difficult um, to deal with. So congratulations to those guys. But just proud of our guys. You know, we found a way. We lost a big fella. And, um, you know, he's a big part of our team. But I think we also show we got a lot of pieces. And we got a lot of guys. And uh, we were able to hang in there and get this one. Uh, questions for the players, please, right here. Nathan McHugh, Titan Sports. Uh, for Vincent and Dakota, uh, what was that last minute like, um, all the, the different plays that happened? And then um, on that final shot, um, what was going through uh, your minds when that ball was in the air? Uh, you know, we had a good play design coming out there. And you know, once it left my hand, it felt pretty good. Um, you know, we've, we've ran that play a lot throughout the year. And um, you know, it's, a, it's a good design set. But you know, those last couple of minutes, you know, we kind of got out of our element, um, you know, forcing some things offensively, um, not making the right reads, let them back in. and. Um, like, like Coach said, I give Butler a lot of credit. You know, they, they played hard. They're a good team. And, um, you know, we're excited to come out with a win. Dakota, Cloud Travis, WTH aren't in Indianapolis. That's the biggest shot you've ever hit? Absolutely. What, what second? <laughs> I don't know right now. This is, this is one, two, and three. <laughs> yeah. and also, can you speak to the seniors really stepped up. Uh, you know, you lose Isaac. How, what did it mean to you guys to play like you did? on a night when you lost Isaac and obviously wanted to help him uh, get to the, to the Sweet 16. Definitely. You know, that's what we talked about before the game. This was for Isaac. I mean, you know, our senior class, we've been through a lot together. Um, you know, I think this is the first game he's missed. Um, so you know, to go out there and play for him, everything he means to this program, um, it, just, it just feels good to finally win and you know, for him right there. Uh, Jason Garland from uh, the Titan Sports. Uh, Vincent, how does it feel to be the leading scorer in your team, contributing a lot to this victory? I mean, honestly, I don't even care that I was the leading scorer. I'm just happy we <laughs> uh, surviving and advancing to the Sweet 16. Uh, the coaching staff did a good job of putting me in great positions to be successful. My teammates found me, and we did a great job of executing Dakota. It's a huge shot at the end for us. You know, I'm Gil Bell, applying for Sports Illustrated for Kids. So the NCAA tournament is like a book, and each team has their own unique chapter. You guys showed a lot of perseverance, losing your team leader. What are you guys doing to adjust and fill in the chapter? You look sharp, man, by the way. I like that suit. <laughs> but no, uh, like you were just saying, I think our thing is for us would be to just stick together. You know, losing Isaac is definitely a big piece of something that we do. And like Dakota said, he's a huge part of our program. So we told each other we had to go out here and play for him. And that's the way we have to keep it going, you know, for the, for the rest of the ride. We don't want to stop anytime soon. We just got to stay together and believe in each other. And I think we'll be okay. Uh, for Vincent, Dave Hogan, Associated Press, how concerned were you when you picked up the third foul at the end of the first half, knowing you're going to have to play the whole second half that way? It was a little frustrating um, to you know be out there here and there, but just trying when I was out there, just trying to be as effective as I could. Got to be a little bit more smarter in those type of situations about picking up that foul and just try to stay out there on the floor. Can't can't afford to be in foul trouble, especially when we're missing a guy like Isaac. Okay, final question for the players right here. Uh, uh, Dakota. 
Uh, how important is your confidence uh, from pr the perimeter going f three for six for this game, you know, going on uh, as the tournament progresses? Do you feel confident shooting from three? Definitely. Yeah, I think, you know, we all do as a collective unit, um, you know, especially losing a piece like Isaac down there. I think, you know, we're going to be a lot more perimeter oriented, um, you know, with Carson, you know, Vince, PJ was huge again tonight. So I think collectively um, we all got to be a little more aggressive and more confident on the perimeter. Best shooting the best. All right, gentlemen, we'll release you back to your locker room. Oh, one more thing. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. Uh, I'm cutting you off. Oh, yeah. Shout out Lil B, TYBG. Appreciate you, man. All right. We'll open the floor to questions for Coach Painter, please. Uh, Coach, uh, Butler didn't seem, they didn't seem like they wanted to go away, even though you guys had stretches of where you were able to hold them down in defense and score. What did you tell your guys to keep them you know, keep them going and keep them telling them that this this game is winnable and then you can take it all the way. Yeah, well, you're going to, you know, the game is, you know, just the game it runs. You know, it goes back and forth any game that you watch unless it just kind of gets lopsided. And um, you knew when you got up 10 in the one stretch, you know, they, they would make plays and come back. We were just trying to do a better job of keeping the ball in front of us and bottling them up, you know, trying to make it as hard as we could and take up their space. And, um, you know, it's hard with Keelan Martin because we put a guard on him, but he's got – you know, the size of a power forward, but yet he can move and shoot. So you're going to give in to something. So when he gets deep, you had the one post move, he had a couple spins. It's hard because he's rolling off your body and he's bigger than you. And, um, you know, that's what's made him a great scorer is just the ability to do a lot of things. But, um, you know, we knew they would make runs. We just had to do a, a good job of executing, um, trying to keep the ball in front of us um, on the defensive end. Um, you know, like we talked about earlier, you know, we lost our poise right there. That could have cost us. Um, we had, a, you know, three to four possessions in the last three minutes um, where we came away from nothing and a couple of them put them into transition. So we we're very fortunate to be able to pull this out, you know, after those possessions. In the back. Coach, talk a little bit about uh, your strategy for replacing Isaac. I saw that you guys went small for a little bit there without right. a big. You played Taylor a little bit more than he usually plays. Right. Uh, was that the game plan going in, and that, is that something you're going to have to try to do going forward? Yeah, well, I think you play teams that have earned their way here, but you know, somebody like you know, Butler and their prestigiousness of a, of a program, I think it starts with playing hard. And so you know, you're worried about your personnel. Everybody puts it in like in a schematic form, and when in reality you've got to compete harder than Butler or you got to compete as hard as Butler. And I thought we were able to do that and match them. You know, they played hard, we played hard. So sometimes you can get caught up in the loss of something instead of getting consumed in what you have. I thought Taylor did some good things. Eifert did good things. Uh, Matt Harms did some good things. But what's ironic, you know, in, in this game, um, you know, is, is Matt Harms, he played 29 minutes. And the game we played the first time, he played 27. So it's not like we put in somebody that hadn't been playing. Now, Jaquiel Taylor hadn't been playing. So for him to give us those kind of minutes, I thought that was huge. And then Grady Eifert has a lot of energy. He's got good physical tools. He can compete. He plays hard. So um, with that being said, our bench did good. No Joe Eastern played well. Uh, Ryan Klein made a huge three there at the end. Um, they just kind of left him open. Um, so I'm you know, just proud of those other guys that had to kind of increase their role. But um, we didn't do anything really different. We, we're not going to play through the low post is, is the only difference. We throw the ball to him a lot. Um, but we're pretty balanced. You know, Carson leads us in scoring. Vince Edwards averages 15. Dakota averages around 13 or 14. Uh, Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Matt, the senior mentality that it's your last chance and you don't want it to end, and you have several seniors out there, how important of a factor is it in a game like this? Well, I think it's important that, you know, we lost our poise there, but then we also regained it. And uh, Dakota Mathias uh, made a huge shot, but we executed that play and uh, set good screens and moved the basketball and did what you're supposed to do. And that's what you have to have. We, we still can win the game with that one possession, and we were able to do that. Um, it, it's so important because they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? I, I know that's hard. You guys say, well, you know, you guys practice. But when you have people that have been in the same system, they started as freshmen, and they grew into seniors. Um, they've been together, and they have so many experiences. It definitely helps going down the stretch. Looking ahead to the next game, what's your strategy? The next game? we got to play harder than Texas Tech. That's my shit. It's a heck of a strategy, isn't it? Um, but, no, uh, Chris Beer's done an unbelievable job at Texas Tech. We played him, and they beat us in the tournament when he was at Arkansas Little Rock, and they play extremely hard, um, very physical, very tough. So we're going to have to be able to match that. Um, we're going to have to rebound the basketball, you know, have quality possessions. I think more than anything, when you get into 
tournament play, so many people are so excited to play and go at it, but you still have to have quality uh, possessions. When we execute and, and get those quality possessions, it really helps us obviously offensively, but it also helps us set our defense and uh, make them go against a set D. Do we have a final question for Coach? Uh, Coach, this is your second straight year making the Sweet 16, of course. For your players, is there a little bit more of a focus mentality rather than, you know, they're just happy to be in the Sweet 16? Is there more of a, uh, like, we're ready for, for revenge for last year? Well, I think any time you've been there before, you know, I think it helps you. I think that experience of being there, and um, I wouldn't say a focus because I thought last year we were focused and uh, we just ran into a bus all. Kansas was really good in that game in the second half. So um, we know we're playing a quality opponent again. We know they're tough and, and, and physical. But anytime you can have an experience like that, I think it definitely helps you the next time. Thank you, Coach. Thank uh, you. The Purdue locker room will be open for about uh, 12 more minutes. When Butler comes in, uh, Coach Jordan will be joined by Kamar Baldwin, uh, Keelan Martin, and Tyler Weidman. We will open uh, with a statement from <coughs> Coach Jordan, and then we'll open the floor to questions for the players. Yeah, the, um, yeah, heck of a. It's like the rest of the games the, the, this weekend, I guess. Uh, heck of a, heck of a game. Um, uh, obviously, we got a ton of respect for for Purdue and, and Coach Painter and their program. Um, and you know, that was uh, that's what you would expect when Butler's playing Purdue. Uh, to go to the Sweet 16. Um, yeah, I, I think March is defined as, as much by those moments as, as just you, you can see, uh, and I know I see it in our locker room, uh, you, and it's palpable just the feelings that teams have one another, the bonds that grow, and nobody wants to stop playing together. Nobody wants those, mo those moments to end. Uh, nobody wants their journey to, to be over. Uh, so you fight, and I thought we fought, uh, and they fought, and somebody has to advance and somebody goes home um, and, and they had to they had the last shot to go up and we had a shot that could have kept us playing and uh, didn't go in but extremely proud of you know th this group extremely thankful for how they embraced um, the change and, and staff and um, and how they represented Butler University this entire this entire run we'll open the floor to questions for the players please Keegan, let's talk about the transition this year and playing for Coach Jordan, who played in the program, and, and how this was for you being a senior. Uh, I think it was a, it was a fun transition uh, going from Coach Holtman to him. Uh, obviously, I had another coaching change, so uh, just had to you know get to know all the coaches and things like that. And then I, I think it it just turned out well this year, and uh, you know I, I want to thank him for having me on this team this year. Yes, uh, Kamara, when you had that uh, running shot from almost midcourt at the end, what, what did you think when you released? Did you, did you think you had a try, or did you, could you tell right, right away that it was, not, it was a little bit off? Uh, I thought it had a shot of going in. Hey, Tyler, can you um, put into words for us, what is, I mean, you're a senior, what are you going through right now? What is, what's in your head? Uh, that it, was, uh, it was a fun season with a great group of guys. Um, Looking forward to see uh, how the team progresses next year and uh, all the progress they're going to be able to make. And I'm looking forward to watching them play next year. 
Nathan McHugh, Titan Sports. Uh, Keelan, what was the key to your offensive performance scoring 29 points tonight? Uh, really just attacking the paint, uh, getting easy scores. Coach kept telling us to attack and uh, look to get fouled. Don't look to get fouled, but like they'll foul you when you get in, the, get in the paint. And obviously, we did a good job of that, just attacking the paint. And we just, you know, we just came up short. But I mean, we, we fought hard tonight, and you can't ask more from us. Um, Keila, when you when you reflect back on your four year Butler career, what what will you think about? Just everything, how I grown from you know freshman to senior year. Uh, went through three coaching changes. Um, just a lot, you know. I've I've grown, I've matured more. Um, came from little boy to 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 a man, um, you know. And and the coaches always pushed me, you know, and my teammates pushed me to get better each and every day, and. Uh, I mean, this, I just can't put it in words. You know, I'm going to miss this team. And I love everybody, every single person on this team, even the, even the coaching staff. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm just going to miss it. Your final question for the locker room. Gentlemen, congrats on a great season. Thank uh, you. We've enjoyed having your team in Detroit. Thank you. Uh, questions for coach, please. Jason Garrelline, Titan Sports. Uh, coach, coming back to uh, coach at your alma mater and having a pretty decently successful season, can you put some, uh, can you tell us some of your thoughts in this first season with Butler? Yeah, you know, my, my thought right now is I wish I could still be coaching this team. Uh, I think you, know, you couldn't ask for um, just for this group of guys to, to put more, put themselves out there more uh, than they did again. Uh, for some of them. And so, obviously, thankful for the opportunity uh, to come back here. It's very special and unique. Uh, but as you get into, you know, th this, th what we're in this for as mentors and, and, um, and teachers, you know, the, the relationships and you, you love being around these guys. It's every day at practice, uh, this group, you know, they, they came and they embraced uh, and they, they were willing to learn. Um, so I just, you know, wish we could wish we could have done better so we could still coach him uh, for a few more practices and, and at least one more game. Uh, Laval just had a, had a couple of things. One, that uh, if you thought Finch and Edwards' uh, block on Kamar's layup there with about a minute left almost might have been the play of the game. And, and also, you know, both halves, you know, tactically, strategically, did you guys pretty much do what you, what you intended to do offensively and defensively? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's, there's so many plays. And, and when you're in this moment, obviously that was, that was a, a, heck of a, a heck of a play to chase it down and block it off the glass. And, uh, but and that, that's what it, you know, like I said, neither, neither team wants to, uh, for the journey to be over. You know, they've got seniors that, that stepped up in a big way um, with Vince and, and Dakota and had a senior go out, so they're fighting for them. And we've got a couple seniors that, that are fighting, so you know plays are being made the entire game, and it's it's intense, um, you know. So you, you expect it, kind of, uh, and guys to step up and do those things. Uh, and I think tactically, um, you know, I thought we dealt with that pressure well. We only had eight turnovers. Um, we had 17 the first time we, when we saw them in December. Um, you know, I thought we got decent shots on the rim, um, and you know we kept them off of the foul line in the second half. Uh, first half we didn't do as good of a job. Um, you know, if you come that came down to you know the three point line, which you knew, uh, obviously with Haas out, um, that the three point line would be a huge factor. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, Matthias steps up and drills one. Um, you talk about a senior stepping up in a big moment, um, and and we could have done a better job there. But everything else, I thought we attacked the paint well. I thought we finished. You know, you look up and we shoot almost 50 percent. Uh, we just couldn't make them miss enough in the second half. Any further questions for Coach? Oh, here we go. Coach, uh, what kind of legacy do you think this senior class will leave uh, for Butler University basketball? Yeah, as I told them in the locker room, uh, you know, those we're gonna miss those those two guys. Um, I think they leave a legacy of the same as you know the classes that have been through Butler before them. That uh, they, they showed toughness, they showed resiliency, um, grit. They went down fighting uh, to the very last possession, uh, and. 
you know, that is what uh, I think defined us all year. If you go all the way back to some games where we were down and fought back and, and won them uh, to this one here. And then those guys were, and, and when we talk about growth from now on, I, I think they'll be a big part of the conversation, just to know where they were when they walked in the door, uh, and what they went through, and how they had to make big jumps as leaders uh, to, to get us to, to where we were today, to have a shot to, to you know, to do this. Any final questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Congrats on a great year. Thank you.